Look at me right in the eye. The human eye is fascinating. Let me just share with you a couple facts about the human eye. The cornea of the eye is a crystal clear outer window. It is formed from embryonic skin uh, that turns crystal clear as you develop in the womb. The lens of the eye is made from the same embryonic skin and it's flexible like rubber with a built-in autofocus. The rest of the eyeball grows like a flower bud directly off of the brain, lining up perfectly with the retina, cornea, and the lens to enable you to see. Each eyeball has six separate muscles that aim them. Both eyeballs must be perfectly synchronized in order to keep you from seeing double. One writer said it this way, the remarkable coordination is like a marksman so accurate with a pair of pistols that he can make only one bullet hole every time he fires both guns. Now get this, if you're awake and you can see, you've done this hundreds of times just by mid morning. Try this sometime. Look at someone in the eyes and say, you have amazing eyes. No, that actually might be a little awkward, so don't do that. But what we want to talk about, we're not actually talking about human eyes here today. We're not really talking about the debate of creation or evolution. We're going to contrast this with what having the eyes of Jesus, to see people the way that Jesus sees people. How does Jesus see people? To, to answer that question, we're actually going to look at how Jesus saw a very notorious sinner in the Bible, Zacchaeus. We're looking at Luke chapter 19. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed in a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. See, what we see here in this passage is that no one is beyond the help and hope of Jesus Christ. I, I, I want you to see really clearly, the people saw Zacchaeus one way, but Jesus saw Zacchaeus a completely different way. Right there in the first four verses, we actually see how, how they saw him. They, they, they first saw him as a traitor. You see, he was a, a tax collector. It, 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 he was a chief tax collector. And what that meant was that he was actually in opposition to the Jews. He, would, he was a basically hired by Rome to take money from his people. He was seen as a, as a traitor, someone who had taken sides with, with someone who was trying to do harm to his own people. So he was a, he was a tax collector, but, but he was also considered a thief. He was actually a government-approved thief. And so he was a, a chief tax collector. And, and then we see kind of a, a, a strange thing here. We saw a couple things that, that were uh, about his morality, but then we see something about his, his physical stature. He was actually short. Now, this isn't a negative or a positive, but this, this probably tells us a little bit about why he maybe couldn't see Jesus in the crowd. He had to run ahead and climb up in a, in a sycamore tree to, to see Jesus. You see, he was morally uh, disregarded by society, but he was also uh, probably put down for, for his height as well. 
he was not seen in good regard. Most people looked at Zacchaeus and probably looked the other way or actually got angry at just thinking about what Zacchaeus did for a living. But here's the cool thing. No one is beyond the help and hope of Jesus. You see, Jesus Christ loved Zacchaeus and Jesus Christ saw him in a completely different way. You see, when, when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he didn't see a traitor or a thief or his physical stature. He saw a sinner that needed to be saved. The, the first thing we see is that, that Jesus saw Zacchaeus. When, when Jesus saw him, he saw someone who was worth looking for. Think about it. When, when all the crowds were there, Jesus stopped and looked up. He could have kept going, but he intentionally stopped and looked up. Have you ever wondered how, how, how Jesus knew where Zacchaeus was or how he knew his name? Here's why. Because Jesus had a divine appointment with Zacchaeus. See, Zacchaeus thought that he was looking for Jesus, but Jesus was actually looking for Zacchaeus. He was worth looking for. Not only was he worth looking for, he was worth taking his time. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, come down. I want to spend time with you in your house. And the people around grumbled and complained and said, how dare Jesus spend time with this notorious sinner? But when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he saw him as someone who was worth his time. The last thing we see about Jesus, he, he was not only someone worth looking for, someone worth taking time with, but he was someone worth saving. Jesus saw a sinner that, that needed a savior. See, there in, in verse 10, it says that, that Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Zacchaeus was lost. He was, he was a sinner in need of a savior. And Jesus knew this. We actually see uh, Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus actually led to a genuine conversion evidenced by his repentance. He said, hey, listen, I will pay back what I owe. I will, what, I, what I've stolen, I will give fourfold. I will repent. And Jesus said, because of your faith, salvation has come to your house. You see, when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he saw someone that needed a savior. Jesus looked out on the multitudes and he sees them as sheep without a shepherd, someone who needs some, a savior. And that's what he saw in Zacchaeus. You see, because no one is beyond, beyond the help and hope of Jesus. So maybe you're like Zacchaeus. Maybe you've done some things in your past. Maybe they're even secret in this moment, but you're super ashamed. Maybe you've been ridiculed or put aside because of some of those decisions and you think you're beyond the help and hope of Jesus. You could not be further from the truth. You see, when Jesus sees you, he sees someone worth looking for. Someone worth his time, but, but most importantly, someone worth saving. And I want you to know that you are not beyond the hope and help of Jesus Christ today. You can turn to him and place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You see, guys, we actually see two applications here in this passage. One for a person who might think that I'm beyond the help and hope of Jesus, but one of someone who has maybe already trusted Jesus. And maybe you are looking at people the way this crowd is looking at people for their sin and judging. And, and maybe the application for us today is, Lord, give me your eyes. Help me to see people and, and see people the way you see them that are not beyond the help and hope of Jesus. So let me give you some, some scenarios. When you walk beside a homeless person who's begging, we need to ask, God, give us your eyes. Give us your heart. What would you do? A girl who gets pregnant out of wedlock, maybe in your school, is your temp temptation to look look the other way or kind of ignore that person or even maybe say some things that are not real nice about that person? Is that what Jesus would do? 
a classmate who drops out of school because they have a drug problem. What would Jesus do? A friend who has come out of the closet and, and who's, who has said, hey, listen, I am a homosexual. What would Jesus do? If you were looking at them with the eyes of Jesus Christ from this passage, what would Jesus do? How would he respond? Would he judge them? Would he act indifferent towards them? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think he would see them as someone whose greatest need was a relationship with him. He would engage them. He would talk to them. Yes, he would lovingly call them to repentance, but he wouldn't show indifference. So maybe the application for us today is to say, God, give us your eyes. Help us to see people the way you see people. May that be our prayer for this week as we go out and serve Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining. See you next week.